Freedom Bench. It's been a while since I've seen y'all. Let's load up some ammo. Welcome back to the bench. So you've seen by the header we're going to do 100 rounds of 9mm. Let's see what we got. First things first, we got to start with some brass. We've got some freshly tumbled brass sitting here in our bin. We're going to sort it. I like to sort it first and then from there we're going to grab 100 pieces. We're going to load them up. So when I sort my brass, I like to sort it into five different categories. Just based off of what I've done so far and just kind of what I like to see, I do it in Federal, gets by itself, Winchester Brass by itself, and then I just go into Mixed. That could be anything from PMC, Blazer, um, anything else without a military crimp or some sort of crimped primer. And then I just call it mixed junk as if it's got, if it's either nickel or if it's got some sort of crimp on it. And I just throw it, throw it in that bag. And then I also have a, a pile here for stuff that I don't reload yet. So you can see there's a 300 blackout in there, that one. And some 45 ACP I haven't dived into that yet because I don't have a, a firearm that shoots that yet but then I just keep a keep a separate bag for all that stuff as I find it at the range so that's what we got let's get to sorting So what do y'all think about sorting brass, especially 9mm? Is it worth it? Not worth it? Silly? Part of the reason why I like to do it is, is that it gets you immediately sorting out the, uh, the crimped stuff if you don't feel like reaming that out or suasion that out. You just kind of eliminate those right away. And then also, the more times you get to see your brass, the more you can see split cases and stuff that doesn't make any sense. Stuff that you wouldn't want to reload anyways. So it's good for that. I don't know. I just seem to enjoy it. And I also think that if you, you know, if you use the same head stamp for a round of 50 or 100 or whatever, you can just really tell the difference then if you're doing a completely set of mixed. You can tell it in the... Uh, the sizing, you can tell it, you know, just in every step of the process almost, in my opinion. So, I don't mind doing it. I know it takes a little bit of time, but what do you guys think? One of the things I always make sure I do is that as I pick through the ones that I'm going to use, I always take one pass before I put them in the tray. Make sure that there's no splits know anything that's going to cause any issues make sure I didn't miss a 380 auto or something like that you just do a quick go around make sure everything looks okay so the last thing you would want I guess the worst thing would be a split case that you'd miss and just kind of blows out the side. Um, you re reloaders already know this, but you're, you are your own quality control. So whatever steps you do, make sure you do the same steps every single time. We'll be all right. So here's our 100 pieces of brass tonight. We got our hands on them and make sure that everything's checked out okay. Primers for tonight are CCI number 500s. Then we're going to be using our Lee 9mm carbide die set along with the factory crimp die. Let's get to resizing and priming. I like to prime on the press, so I use the uh, Lee Safety Prime. Let me give you another round of how this thing works. So we got all 100 on there. 
shake them around. Spill them a couple times because you're on camera. But eventually, you shake it enough times, there we go. All but one of them are flipped the right way. One of the things that I like to do when I'm priming the brass, I try to make sure that everything I do in my process has some sort of meaning behind it. Even to the littlest detail of how I put the, uh, the brass back in the container. So you'll notice as we go throughout the night that I there's a reason for either having them flipped on their head or on their on the case mouth. And once you get in a rhythm here, you can see that I keep as I'm priming, I'm keeping all of these cases so I could see the head stamps. That way I'm not having any wasted motion when I'm going to pick up a new one. I can very clearly see ones that are already primed and ones that haven't been. Especially on a single stage press, anytime that you can have a little bit of time savings, I think it's beneficial. is another reason that I like to prime on the press it's because we're knocking out resizing and priming all in the same in the same motion essentially you can see here as you kind of get in a little bit of a groove it really doesn't take all that long to kind of get through them especially since this part of the process really isn't anything that you have to be have a whole lot of finesse or we're not worried about powder at this step so it's just a matter of getting these knocked out and moving on so we'll do a couple more of these and we'll catch up with you here in a little bit Now that everything's primed, I'm going to take all of our cases here and I'm going to flip them so that I can see their mouths. Next step in the process here is belling out that case mouth so we can accept our, our bullet or our projectile. And as I mentioned before, I like to make sure everything that I'm doing here has a purpose. So now, as you can see with everything facing, I'll just do the first 50 facing up. Run it up real quick and drop it on its top. I guess I can start over here so you can see. I'm just belling that case mouth and flipping it over. That way, no matter where I'm at on the board, I could put, pick one out of the middle if I wanted to and then flip it back on its top. I could just keep going. Have the same motion. Get into a groove here. Not have any problems wor worrying whether or not I grabbed one and already flared one or where I'm at in the process. One of the things that I've thought about, since I'm just a single stage reloader at this point, these dies, these powder through expanding dies, have the ability to, I believe, have some sort of auto loader on top of them. So since you could technically get powder through the top there, 
they have these out auto loaders that you can get that could actually drop your powder at the same time that it's belling the case, which would be a massive time savings. So I've, I don't know, I've been looking at that a little bit, but that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. Just being new to this game, I'm just trying to enjoy the single stage process as much as I can. At some point in the future, I might look to a progressive, but at this point, we're just going to work on making this process as efficient as we can, and let's enjoy it. All right, now we've got 100 pieces of 9mm brass that has been resized, primed, flared, and ready to go. Now on to the worst, my least favorite part of the process, which is powder. Tonight we are going to be using Accurate Number 5. This is actually only the second power I've, powder I've ever used. We started off with Accurate Number 7. One of the things that we noted as we went from 7 to 5 is that recoil is, a, is greatly reduced when going from 7 to 5. Maybe that's something that's kind of commonly known for everybody, but wasn't expecting that. I think we started out with 6.8 grains of Accurate Number 7. We're doing 5.8 grains of number 5, and the recoil impact was significant. I'm shooting most of these, if not all of these, out of a Glock 17, and recoil was... I was surprised. I was not anticipating that type of recoil coming out of, you know, from one powder to the next. So, the next powder I want to do... After number five, which I'll get into here probably a little bit more quickly than I was on pace for, is a tight group. So let me show you some of my process for what I like to do when I'm going through powder. This is the worst part, but it's got to be done. So you can see again, I've got all my head stamps facing um, to me. Um, and again, part of that is since we're doing powder now, we got to make sure we don't do a double charge and we got to make sure this is the most important step that we're going to do today is making sure that powder is correct. So a couple of things we're going to use today is we got a scale over here, which you can't see, sorry, don't have a lot of room for video equipment. And also, what we've got over here is we're using the Lee uh, Perfect Powder Measure. And we've got that loaded up with our Accurate Number 5. And the first thing we are going to do is we are going to weigh this piece of brass and then tear it out. What I found is that by doing this, and instead of using the, uh, the little catch plate, you know, to, to weigh stuff, it's just a lot more accurate in making sure that you get all the all the flakes of powder inside the case. So we're gonna drop some powder there, measure it there. And I've already had this thing set up to 5.8 grains since I've been loading here in the past week or so. And that one's good. So you can see over here, I've got two cases that I can see the powder in and the rest of my pieces of brass are with the mouth down. That way, uh, with there's really there's not going to be any uh, double powder thrown tonight. Um, I just found that to be my process and something that I like a lot to make sure that I'm grabbing a piece of brass that does not have any powder in it. I also really like this funnel that came with the kit that I got as we weigh this next one, 5.8. Um, so these are coming in. I like to to measure the first five and then I kind of go from there. 
And then you can tell, um, since this is really kind of a, an average charge, um, when you inspect them towards the end and you look inside, you can see if they're all relatively the same amount of powder. But this funnel I really enjoy using right underneath of this perfect powder measure. Five point eight again. You know, I find with this little funnel or whatever, you just drop it in there. I really, it really reduces the amount of powder that gets spilled out. So, thankfully tonight we already had this guy set up the way that we wanted it to, and it's throwing seems to be throwing the correct amount of powder. Let's just do one more here for fun, and then we'll be off to the races. Yep. 5.8 Let's get to throwing this powder We are getting very close We've got all of our powder in Make sure we got powder in every single case. We'll just take a look at this 50 first. Everything's looking really good. No double charges. These are all looking great. Next step of the process, process is bullet seating. Tonight we'll be looking at a Berries 124 grain .356 round nose plated bullet or projectile, whichever you prefer. We got a hundred of these in the bowl. Let's get to seating. Overall length tonight we're shooting for 1.16. See what this one's at. 1.16869, somewhere in there. You know, I don't know if it's this these lead dies or if this is just kind of how bullet seating usually goes. I just did that one. It's 1.166. If I push a little bit harder, I'm at 1.162. Um, I don't know that it really matters going out to thousandths. Um, it's just something that kind of bu bugs me. I would think, I mean, it really does, depending on how hard I push into the, see that one's 1 1.163 and I really didn't push all that hard. Um, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if this is a lead die thing or if it's just me, if I'm just doing something not quite right. See, that one's 1.168. 1 so, I mean, I'm within six one, one thousandths, but now it's at 1.160. <laughs> So, I mean, I guess the type of pressure you put on the, you know, on the ram, you know, how, how hard you're pushing in there is going to make a difference. It's 1.162. You know, but ideally I would just, you know, rep these out and get them all on there and not really have to worry about, you know, how hard you push the bullet on there because the die should kind of take care of that. See that one's 1 1.157. You know, so that's you know I don't know, nine thousandths or so spread. Which I don't really think is a big deal at all, but 
something I'd rather not have to worry about, but what ends up happening is, is I usually end up measuring most of them, I would say, but I'd like to not do that. So if there's something I'm doing wrong here that you'd like to throw me a comment, feel free to do so. But let's get these bullets seated. So I ended up measuring every single one of them. There's all 100. We have rounded the turn. We're headed for home. Let's crimp these. So we got the Lee factory crimp die loaded up into the press. We've also got out our Hornady 9mm case length gauge. So every single one of these is going to pass through the crimp die and then we're going to drop it, do the old drop test. I don't know if this is technically a plump test since we don't have the barrel out, but, you know, same diff. Every single one is going to pass through both of these stages. And if for some reason it doesn't pass, then we'll set it to the side. We'll show you what we'll do at that point if we have any. So the cool thing about the, the crimp die is that it's actually kind of resizing that taper of the brass. And more times than not, you're not going to have an issue going through this case length gauge after it passes through the crimp die because of that, because of that resizing process. I don't know if we can get a close up here. Before crimp. After crimp. It's really relatively light crimp. I don't really see any reason why we gotta do a heavy crimp. But you can tell for sure when you're looking at that, you can see the uh, can see the crimp on there so I'm not I haven't had any issues with the setting on this die yet so we're gonna roll with it no issues so far going through the case length gauge if I find one I'll let you know but I'm gonna get the rest of these 90 done and we'll see in a bit all right so we had 98% efficiency when it came time to doing the case length gauge and we had two rounds that didn't pass. See there's one. It's a little bit tough getting out. All right, 99%. Thought that other one was must have got stuck and it didn't and so we've got one. We've got one that's not really working and we got to push it out. So what I like to do when, when that happens is I use the Lee, excuse me, the Lee Bulge Buster Kit. Um, now this is not advisable for 9mm, but I do it anyways. Um, I think at one point Lee said that it was okay to do, but since, you know, whenever they stopped using that as a recommendation, but what we're actually doing here is using a Lee 9mm Makarov factory crimp die, um, which is a little bit different. I have no idea what the difference is between the Makarov and the... Uh, What is it? Nine millimeter Luger, I think, is the other die. Um, but anyways, this gets inserted onto the, into the press, and you you push the completed cartridge all the way through the Makarov die. I get my bushing. Go. 
insert the Makarov die. We'll take this, this round that was messed up. See how it's not passing? We're gonna push it all the way through that Makarov die. It's through there now. Normally, if you had a bunch of these, this is what the catch bin is for and all that good stuff, but we only had one, so it's not necessary. And let's see if it works. It still doesn't. There, that was a little bit easier. There, now it worked. There's certain part of that case that just doesn't... Let's do it again. This video is long enough, right? Let's just keep it on going. So that's two times through. Let's do a third. Let's see if that makes any difference. You can tell it's definitely easier going through. Now let's see. Still having a little bit of issue. That one fell out. So since I'm shooting a Glock, I don't have any problem shooting this. There's not gonna be any issues. I mean, you can just, whatever STV, it's the head stamp on this. Those are the ones that always give me the most trouble. Um, I don't have a problem shooting it. I don't really see what the issue would be for shooting it. Um, that's how we're going to end it tonight, guys. There's our completed 100 rounds of 9mm, 124 grain, berries, round nose, plated bullet. I couldn't be more happy. There we are. Thanks for sticking around, guys. I know this was a long one. We'll see you in the next video.